news online. Here are today's top stories. Road closure finale, Tories lash out. Well, if I was them, I would do a little bit more. Candidate debate, have you cast your vote yet? And Winchester hope to dump their derby rivals out of the cup. A Conservative politician has criticised Network Rail's decision-making process following a meeting explaining that the imminent closure of Stoke Charity Bridge. This comes after, recent, after the recent St Cross and Andover Road closings. Stuart Appleby finds out more. The final Network Rail public meeting has seen local residents briefed about the upcoming closure of Stoke Charity Bridge, located just outside Winchester. The move follows Network Rail's closure of St Cross Bridge earlier this year and Andover Road Bridge due to close in the coming weeks. You know, if you were going for a big operation the doctor didn't tell you what he was going to do, uh, it, it would be bad enough. And, and I think you know, that's, that's the same with, with this project. Is that, you know, I, I think Network Rail have done what they're statutory obliged to do, uh, but I think, you know what, if I was them, I would do a little bit more. They could have linked in with us. I don't think they've done enough of that. Um, and that you can see that in the correspondence that comes through to people like me. <laughs> Network Rail is defiant about the job they are doing. Um, I, I just disagree with him on that point. We briefed the PPCs. There's, I'm satisfied. That's my responsibility within Network Well. I'm satisfied. There's nothing more we could have done down here. The feedback's been positive. Um, obviously, we, we, we can't leave it at that. We've now got to take it forward. I think just communicating with us as locals as to what's happening, when it's happening. They provide the solution which closes the road. It's maximum inconvenience for the residents because they know they don't have to pay the residents any compensation. Stoke Charity Bridge, based in Kingsworthy, is due to close on April 6. The way that Network Rail has handled it, um, in so, it particularly right at the very beginning, uh, has, has caused some ill will that's taken time to sort out. Although residents will have to endure the work for now, Network Rail have given the new bridges a 125-year guarantee. Stuart Appleby, Winchester News Online, Kingsworthy. University Union boss Mick Jardine says the University of Winchester is set to weather the recent spending cuts thanks to large financial reserves. Claire Icebrandy reports. Having announced large budget cuts across the board, it looks as if the Higher Education Funding Council have spared the University of Winchester from too much pain. And this university has not come out as badly as, as many, most universities have done. So that's something to be grateful for. Having said that, it, it is a cut in real terms, and that is bad news for the university. Um, also, there's a possibility of further cuts to come, so um, staff, academic staff uh, are anxious about uh, the implications of cuts. Whilst the university management refused to go on camera, they were adamant that they would not be cutting jobs. While the cuts announced for the sector are severe and will undoubtedly affect investment plans, the university is reasonably well set to deal with them. We are therefore not planning any large-scale job losses. As the graph shows, the university's budget has actually increased. It is only a loss as the increase is lower than the rate of inflation. Though the university has fared well, the prospect of yet more cuts after the general election will no doubt force the university to tighten their financial belt. Claire Ice Brandy, Winchester News Online. This week at the University of Winchester, it's all about votes. And the candidates have been trying to get yours. Lucy Pilgrim went to the election debate to find out more. Electoral candidates were trying to get more people to vote for them in the debate session this week. Potential presidents are trying to get the percentage of students uninvolved with the union to cast their votes. I mean, I think the attendance at this evening's uh, question and answer session kind of highlights some of the um, some of the difficulties all the officers have to face um, about getting the message out um, and getting the message understood and then get the message reacted to. We have some extremely talented people here at Winchester. We need to be nurturing those uh, talents with things like utilising both floors of the board. We have two floors. We should use them for different things. I'm not here to mould the union into my image, I'm here to mould it into your image because it's your student union. It's not all about that, it's about the other 75% of people that you've got to represent. So the whole of the student population will be represented. I learned I'm adapting and now I want to achieve the change. I'm serious, I'm experienced and I'm realistic. Students will soon find out if their voices have been heard. Lucy Pilgrim, Winchester News Online. 
A government report has exposed a lack of ongoing learning amongst the people in the education sector, but the University of Winchester's education department has jumped to the defence of their colleagues. Glenn Hutt reports. Research carried out by YouGov on behalf of BIS, the Department for Business, Innovation and Skills, showed a third of people working in education haven't learnt a new activity or hobby in the last year. Education experts say that teaching standards could suffer as a result. The Education Department at the University of Winchester reacted to the report, heavily questioning figures that point to a lack of development through the careers of workers in their sector. Teachers are always trying to find a way of of finding different hobbies and different activities to take part in. I think the problem is teachers don't have enough time in which to do, to do new things and to, to find new hobbies because teaching takes up such, such a lot of your time. The report also showed that 6% of the education sector haven't read a book in the last year. So what about the people here in Winchester? How often do they read? Last time I read a book was last week. I don't think I've read one for like <laughs> five years. Not for a long time. The book I'm reading at the moment is the, the Canons by Trevor Beeson. Professor Joyce Goodman, Dean of the Faculty of Education, Health and Social Care said, I am proud of our education students. They are creative and flexible and go the extra mile. I think of them as lifelong learners. Glenn Hutt, Winchester News Online. And now to Rob with the sport. Thank you, Catherine. And now for the non-league roundup. Eastley fell to a disappointing 4-1 away defeat to Hampton and Richmond, Sam Butler scoring the consolation for the away side. Basingstoke also fell to a narrow 1-0 defeat at home to Staines Town, James Marquez scoring the winner for the away side. And Totten bounced back from their first home defeat of the season with a crushing victory over Thatcham Town, Nathaniel Sherborne and James Taylor with a brace each in the 5-1 win. After an impressive point at the weekend against leaders Poole, Winchester was hoping to reach the semi-final of the North Hampshire Senior Cup. Jason Curtis reports. A dull first half saw both teams start slowly, with Fleet creating the best chance of the half. Goalkeeper Stacey Harper was substituted just after half-time with suspected ankle ligament damage, and midfielder Zach Glassball put in goal. It wasn't until the 85th minute that the deadlock was broken, with Nathan Lynch nodding past David Smalley. Fleet replied straight away through Mark Anderson, with the game seemed destined to go to extra time. But a defensive mix-up saw Dan Reed send Fleet through to the semi-final. After the defeat last night against Fleet, I'm now joined by Winchester City manager Stuart Hussey. Hi Stuart. Hi there, Rob. After watching the highlights, how would you say your team performed? Uh, last night was an outstanding performance, playing against a side two leagues above. Uh, we went there with uh, high hopes that we could put in a good performance um, and, and the lads done themselves proud. You know, we come away really disappointed that we, we didn't come away with a win and, and progress into the semi-finals. After losing your top scorer and having to play a midfielder in goal two weeks running, and only having won one game in the last seven, do you feel your team needs to improve? We're going through a difficult time at the moment. You know, we've got a lot of injuries. Uh, we've lost two goalies in the last two games. We've got our third goalies out injured as well. Um, we're coming to the end of the season. Uh, we've got a small squad, but it's more about performances as opposed to results at this stage of the season. And the last two performances have been excellent against the league leaders, Paul, and obviously Fleet Town. And you know we take a lot of credit, you know, especially going to the players for, for the performances they put in. You know, if we can get a bit of consistency week in, week out, turning out those those type of performances, we'll be okay. okay thanks. That's all we've got time for. And finally. The election campaign unofficially got underway today with the announcement of the budget. Here at Winnell, we're getting ready as well for what could be the most exciting election campaign for years. Kayleigh James tells us more. Thank you, Robert. We've got massive plans for live coverage of the results from all over our region and European reaction from one of Austria's leading media colleges. Joining me now is Martina Anzinger from the Austrian Te Higher Technical University in Linz near Vienna. Hi, Martina. Hi there, hi from me and hi from my colleagues and our students at the Upper Austrian University of Applied Sciences. 
Tell me, are you looking forward to our election coverage? Yes, of course we are. Uh, we are very excited about it and keen to find out what's happening and what the results are and work with you. Is there much interest in UK politics in Austria? Uh, yes, there is. Uh, we all feel part of the, as part of the European Union and the European community, so of course everything that is happening in another European country is of uh, great importance uh, to us. I'm afraid that's all we've got time for today, Martina. Uh, that's okay. all for your news and sports today. Join us again after Easter for the latest developments. Log on to winall.co.uk. Goodbye.